Hi, Sora here. Thought it was about time I introduced myself. Um, I am the creator of Octopudding and the person whose hands you see in the tutorial. So I thought it might be nice to see what your tutor actually looks like. So today I'm going to be introducing my first Christmassy project. So I'm just going to bring him up slowly and have a little peek. Ta-da! We have a little Robin, but similar to my uh, pumpkin that I did just a little while back, he has a surprise. He has a nice chocolatey treat inside there. So I thought these would be great for Christmas presents, stocking fillers, etc, etc, just general gifts. I also think he'd look quite cute as a penguin. You could easily reverse the colours. Well, not reverse the colours, that'd look a little bit silly. But if he was black with a white tummy, of course, you could actually create a little penguin there as well. So this is what I'm going to be doing today and we'll be doing it in a few minutes. But I just thought I'd say hi and sort of say a little bit about myself. As you know, I'm a crochet, clearly so. I'm also a doll collector. I also do write patterns. I have had my own Amigurumi crochet book created. And also I am a designer for Simply Crochet magazine, freelance. So I've had some items in there as well, which was really, really nice. So um, about it today, I just wanted to say hi. Feel a little bit odd. I wasn't planning on being in front of the camera, but I think it's about time that I actually did after a year. Some people won't recognise me with my glasses on because I only wear glasses for close work. So glasses off, can't see a thing. Glasses on, can see things that are close to me. I don't need them for walking around generally though. So that's why some people might look, think it looks a little bit odd with I've got glasses on. So that's all I'm going to say today. Off to our tutorial now. Be with you in a second. Bye. We are now with the tutorial we've got our little robin here as i've already mentioned he's hiding a chocolate orange in there so you're working around it really um could be healthy and have a piece of fruit in there if you wanted to but i think christmas is coming up so it would make a really nice treat there so i'm going to pop him to one side and we're going to start with his body we do have a few pieces on this one compared with my other one so we do have a body our head is separate because I needed to stuff it because I don't want sort of it collapsing and also it's an easy way of putting the safety eyes in by doing that and obviously we've got the little wings and we've got his tummy there so there's a little bit extra there so I'll pop him to one side now to make him we need our double knit yarn I do have a mixture here um this is actually a King Cole and these are Stylecraft it doesn't really matter you may have to watch your tension depending on the double knit some slightly thicker than others we're going to be using three millimeter crochet hook I have a little bit of stuffing for his head I have some safety eyes you don't need to use them you could use buttons if you wished or you could just sew the little features on you've got to always think about who's going to be receiving this so if it's a younger person um, you really have to think about the safety issues there so be careful with that I've got my scissors I've got my my needle holder and I have a little jug stitch marker today so we can put most of this to one side because we're going to be starting with our body I'll pop that over as well and let's get going to be honest it's not a huge difference from the pumpkin one little bit of difference um, but the basics are the same his body is almost identical to be honest so slip knot you want to check that I do my slip knots I go round I go over and I pull it through okay so onto the hook you everybody's got different ways of doing it but that's just the way I actually do it so you work on however works for you we're going to start like with all my amigurumi we're going to start with two chain and into the first chain here we're going to be doing six double crochets remembering I am working in UK terms if that was an American term we would be looking at single crochets but we are working in double crochet so one two three four five and six so I can now pull this bit we'll just pull it tight slightly and that's the beauty of a slip knot so it now covers that hole in the middle there we're now going to do two in every single one of them if you're not sure count from the back so I've got one two three four five and six because dark colors again are sometimes a little difficult to see 
first one's always a bit clumsy to get into so we're going to do two double crochets in every single one of those six so that's our second one with two in our third one with two in we got number four number five and our last one, number six. So now, because we've done two double crochets into every one of those six, we have 12. So we've doubled up nicely there. So we're getting it a little bit bigger. We're going to do that again. So into every single one of these DCs, double crochets, you're going to do two double crochets. So we'll start. We have one. So remember, there's two in there. This is number two for two stitches. Number three. No, number four, number five, so we're almost halfway now, number six, did I miscount one there, not sure, I think that was six, we can always check at the end, that's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and our last one, so 12. So we now have, or maybe not, it's just come out, we now have 24 stitches. So you can see obviously our round is getting a little bit bigger. I'm gonna pop my stitch marker in here. Not really necessary if you've got a nice sort of quiet space to crochet. But if you've got any distractions, it's a good idea to pop it in. Because on the next round, we're going to be doing two in the first one, two double crochets in the first stitch, one double crochet in the second stitch, two double crochets in the third, one double crochet in the fourth. And you're going to alternate that all the way around. So two, one, two, one, all the way around. So we should get an increase and we should end up with 36 stitches. So we have two in our first one. We have one. In our second one and you're going to continue that pattern a two and a one a two and a one this is why the stitch marker is a good idea because if you have forgotten sort of what you're counting I mean if you were going to be really strict and you've got it nice and quiet you can count every single one but I'm not going to over worry about that because I've got my stitch marker in as long as I know I'm alternating and that there's two in the first one, one in the second one, I know my increases should be fine. Keep dropping these stitches today. We're almost round. So that was a two. And the next one's a one. Or not. There we go, a one. I'm hoping the colour's going to show. It's not great working with dark colours. So some of it you sort of might have to sort of hear me rather than see it. I'm going to try my best to make sure you can. And I've got a light on it, so fingers crossed you can. Um, but I'm not sure yet until I actually see it up as a video myself. Because obviously I'm just recording it at the moment. And then we've got a few more there. So a two. And a one. And I think we have one last set, a two and a one. Now you can see it starts to go a bit crinkly. Don't worry about that. It will totally stretch out in a few minutes because we're just going to go double crochet rounds for quite a while. I'm going to take my Robin off. You see, he does stand alone. You can actually have him as a little standalone thing afterwards, which is sort of quite cute. But this is where the orange comes in handy to have it with you while you're measuring. Because your tension may be different to my tension. Your yarn may be slightly different. I know in my last video, um, a lady commented on the yarn. Because obviously the American yarns, they're slightly different name to ours. Um, it's nothing major, but with, they refer to worsted rate, weight, they refer to sport weight, whereas we're sort of double knit, iron, chunky, four ply, etc, etc. So sometimes that doesn't always sort of come across. So if you're not in the UK, apologies for that. 
um but this is a double knit yarn i think it's a sport weight because i've got a feeling the worsted weights towards an aran so it's a little bit thicker so you might have to experiment a little bit i'm afraid with that but this is what you need to be so it's approximately around that top part of our orange it needs to be quite tight because it will stretch so we're going to do just one double crochet into every stitch all the way around and we're actually going to do that for quite a few rounds let me just double check what i've got on there i've got 15 rounds written down that though will vary on your tension so we're going to go for that 15. if you know what you're doing this is the time you can speed up but i know some people do like to crochet along so i'm not going to deliberately speed the tutorial up i have seen some people do that but i know i go quick enough as it is so i'm just going to try it's really hard to slow down actually um to just take a steady pace on doing this so as i say you guys who know what you're doing you can fast forward to where i start the head if you wish but keep measuring over your orange as you go just in case your tension is slightly different to mine i can be a little bit tight on my tension so that is something to be aware of glad to see some of you have been doing the crochet doll hat i've seen some lovely pictures um so i know some of the dolly people won't be watching these tutorials but they they were brilliant it was so nice to see that people had actually made them and i'm so pleased they fit the dolls and they look great on them as well so thank you for sending me some of those photos because obviously some of you do follow me on instagram and facebook and on twitter so that's how i've got the photos in that respect don't know whether you can actually put them on youtube i don't know i know you can put your comments in don't think you can put photos in though I don't know it's something perhaps i'll have to have a look at so there we go we're almost round on our first round this will take a little bit longer than our other one right so that's round one make sure you've got a pen and paper mark it down it's so easy to forget where you are i mean with this you could get away with it just measuring and measuring and measuring and measuring until you feel it fits the chocolate orange or the apple or whatever you're actually going over so we're on our second one seems a long way doesn't it 15. some of you will have moved on now to fast forward that's great no worries there or if you want to pause the video perhaps and just do the amounts and then come back to what i'm doing that's another way of doing it or if you really really desperately um want to sort of follow every stitch you can slow it down in your settings but just turn the volume down because i sound like i've been drinking a lot of alcohol because it really slurs the voice so it's not a great sound so i'm gonna to have to go a little bit quicker i'm afraid because if i don't we'll be here for the next week while i just do this We're almost round on our second one they don't take that long it's 36 stitches round and as i say you just keep going round in a spiral fashion until we fit over our chocolate orange there i've been really good with this chocolate orange this chocolate orange is the same one that i use for the pumpkin and i've still not eaten it and now i'm trying to be really 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 good um it's got a few events coming up we've got a friend's wedding as well um so i would like to feel bit more comfortable <laughs> in uh, the dress i've chosen so i'm trying to be good it might not last long it never does i'm on day three already think i've been starving to death right clip that in oh i'll just throw my pen on the floor now that's not going to be great is it for me marking off i'll not pick it up for a second though so round and round again we go so this is our third round hope you like the intro i've put on today looks a little bit weird though i've just realized because i've got a halloween backdrop up and i'm sat in front of it and i'm showing you a christmas item so um not quite right there but i haven't got a christmas backdrop up yet because i've still got quite a bit of uh, photo uh, taking with the dolls to do for halloween in fact i've got making for the dolls to do for halloween let alone photos so that is why i've got that backdrop there i thought it was about time I said hi i know my dolly people have seen my face because some of the videos i've had to be there when the dolls are there um but it was something i was avoiding 
but then I thought, mm, you know, perhaps I should. You know, it's nice to see the face behind the hands, perhaps. Uh, nice to see who's actually teaching you rather than just these floating hands. So that's why I've said hi. Felt a bit weird, <laughs> but I suppose I'll get used to it. It's only took me a year to do it. Right, I'm going to have to get my pen now, aren't I? So you're going to have to bear with me a second. I'm going to have to pop that down. But can you see how it's starting to shape around the orange? There is no more shaping needed because the actual yarn will stretch nicely over it. So I'm just grabbing my pens. You might hear some noises. Oh, I've done it. I thought I was going to fall off the chair then. So that is three. Love to hear what you think about me doing an intro with me. Um, I don't know whether it's necessary or not. I've been looking at other people's tutorials um, and I just can't make up my mind really whether it's something you should or you shouldn't do. So I'm sort of just playing with ideas and see where it goes from there. Like I say, I know I'm going to be looking like I'm going a little bit fast now. But you don't need to worry about what I'm physically doing at this moment. If you know what your double crochet is, just do one in every single one. That's all you're doing. Just going round and round and round and round and round until you've got the shape you require to go over your actual orange or object that you're using. Yes, Christmas is coming fast. I'm one of these people who can actually say I've actually done quite a bit of my shopping. It's October and I've been buying Christmas presents. But you've got to start early, haven't you? Especially if there's quite a few members of the family to send parcels to Father Christmas for. So, you know, it's important you get it organised. Right, there's another round. So, almost a third of the way there. And can you see it is actually now starting to shape into like a little bowl still looking nice and fitting well over our orange there i can hear a little pussycat tinkling i can hear a bell again she's not gonna be pleased with me because i've shut her out again i've got both her and the dog laid on the outside of the door waiting to come in I don't mind them in here, uh, but Pippi the cat does have a tendency to steal the yarn while I'm trying to work with it. So I think it's best she's not causing chaos while I'm trying to do this. I can hear you, Pippi. I'm hoping to do quite a few Christmas tutorials over the weeks. Um, so please keep an eye out for that. And if it is something you're wanting to keep up to date with, just pop the notification bell on uh, and subscribe and you'll get notifications when I've actually done it. There will obviously be dolly ones in between and a couple of box openings. But there will be quite a bit of crochet in there as well. Great time of year to crochet is Christmas. And we're round again. So make sure we mark it off. We have five. So we are literally a third of the way. Let's double check. That's stretching nicely. So you can see, as I say, we're about a third of the way. And that's probably about right. We are about a third of the way down the orange. So the next five will be about there. And then we should be at the bottom. Round we go again. My stomach's actually rumbling again. You'll not, I'm hoping you can't hear it. <laughs> 
I think I mentioned before, I don't know whether I should have a bit of music going while I'm doing this bit, but um, I don't know how to do it. And also, I know you've got to be really careful with copyrights, etc, etc. So you can't just pick a favourite music. It'll sound more like an elevator music or a lift music. That's not something I really want to listen to. Or some sort of little tinkly tune. I might have to think about it. Just in the background, for especially when I go quiet, which isn't very often. Round again, there we go. We have six rows now. Rows, they are not rows, they are rounds. This is all done in an amigurumi style. So there's no stopping and starting, which is great. So no having to sort of stop at the end of your round, slip stitch join, and then carry on round again. I think that can make for a real lumpy piece of work if you're not careful. So that is why I prefer this spiral system. The only thing is, you do have to watch for your stitch marker. Because when I get round on this round, I'm actually going to move it up. Because with it being spiral, if you were literally counting every stitch, which I know we're not, so we don't really have to over worry. Um, but if it was something where counting was required, your stitch marker appears to move. Of course it doesn't really. And it's just because of the spiral system, it sort of alters its position slightly. So it is important to keep shuffling it up. The body's the largest part, obviously, on the bird. Um, if you can do the body, the rest is absolutely easy peasy. I have mentioned I feel this is suitable for a beginner. Um, I do think it is. You might have to take a little bit longer. The beak is the worst bit. Oh, I bet you could hear that stomach rumble. That was a big rumble. It's because I've dashed out this morning because uh, my grandchildren were having school photos done. So I said I'd help um, with that. And then I've sort of rushed back in. Um, because I am on thyroid medication, um, I've taken it and then I can't eat for half an hour. And then I started doing this. Not a great idea. So now I'm hungry. Right, we have seven rounds. Yay. We're, in fact, when we get halfway, it said I was moving my stitch marker, didn't I? Let me move it. Let's move it. So, that will do there. Like I say, don't over fuss, but it is a good idea to move it up every now and again. Just gives you a rough idea where you're going to. But for what we're actually making, there is no sort of, doesn't have to be perfect, should I say. So I'm halfway around this now, so this round, so I can actually say I'm halfway done for my orange. So when we get around this one, we've gone just over halfway. So if I can see if I can nosy what the time is. Um, 21 minutes, is that? I think it is. But obviously the first part was me sort of chuntering about what we'd got and what we required. So I don't know. We could say this is probably taking about sort of 15 minutes. As I say, it does take longer than our pumpkin because we have more elements to it. The pumpkin was relatively simple. Hope some of you don't think this is too early to be doing Christmas. But if you are making gifts, I know some of you will have already started making gifts in various mediums. So I think we need to start. Especially if you end up making like 20 of them or then friends see them and then the friends want them. And there's another 10. You know, it, it can add up. And believe you me, it gets a little on the tedious if you have to do that many. I'm very impatient. I've got a concentration span of a gnat. Um, so I like to change constantly. So obviously this is my second robin I'm making because I made the first one for demonstration purposes. Not split the yarn there because I'm not concentrating. Right, I'm going to take that stitch out because it's split. Beauty crochet, you're only taking one stitch out, so just take it out. Don't bother trying to fight to actually sort the split out. Just come out and go on again. Oh, there we go. Hope I'm staying in the centre. I seem to be today. 
I think I've finally decided where the camera should sit. The other thing I'm not sure about is when I videoed myself, um, I did it with the front facing camera. I think, is that front facing or is this front facing? I don't know. The opposite way anyway, selfie sort of positioning because I needed to see what I was doing. Um, so I'm not sure how that affects quality. My phone's not bad, so I'm hoping it's not going to affect the quality at all. And at least if it works, it means I can do them like that in the future. Because I've always tried, if I've videoed myself, which has only been a couple of times, I've had it when the camera's the other way around and I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. And it takes a lot longer because you can't see your face, you can't see your positioning or anything like that. We're around. That is number nine. Almost two thirds there. Shall we check? Shall we check? Is it fitting? It is. Look at that, eh? That's fitting lovely. Sliding about a bit, but looking good. So again, keep checking on your orange. Maybe do three or four rows, rounds. I'm doing it again. Um, and then try it on the orange. Keep making sure it fits. Because if you've only done a couple of rounds and you find it isn't fitting, it's easily rectified. If you find it is too tight... I mean, really, really too tight because you do need it tight because, as I said, the yarn, because it's just a basic acrylic, will stretch. I've got a feeling somebody has just knocked on my door, guys. So I'm just going to pause there. I'm just going to pop that down and pause and I'll be back to you in a second. I'm back. I just run up the stairs. That's not a good idea when you've got to talk, is it? So off we go. We're carrying on round, weren't we? It was the postman. He just brought me another little parcel, which is uh, another Christmas gift sorted. I know people are starting to put on Facebook things like X amount of days to Christmas, etc, etc. It's a bit scary when they put it on like that. Right, that is our tenth round. So we've only got five more to go. Because it seems like an eternity. But when we've got this bit done, the rest is a lot quicker. And you'll be glad to know we'll be changing on to another colour after the head. So you might be able to see it a little bit better. I think this design you could also do for a penguin. I was thinking about that. If you did it in black, you certainly wouldn't want to watch me doing it in black. But if um, you did it in black and obviously a white tummy... You could have a really cute penguin. What do you think? Quite penguinish. I think it would work. I think that'd be quite cute. So if you've got any penguin fans in the family, that would be a great one to do. You can get quite a few of these out of a ball of wool as well. This yarn that I'm actually using, they're only 50 gram balls. Um, this is the second one, obviously, I have made, I would say, easily, possibly another two. So if you are making some nice sort of budget little Christmas presents, but presents that mean a lot because you've actually made them, I think that makes such a huge difference rather than just sort of buying something. Of course, we'll buy things as well. But I think a handmade gift is a lovely thing to have as well. Because it's not the money you've paid for the yarn or the fabric, it's the time you've spent doing it. We're on countdown now. We're on our last, our final four rounds. I'm pretty sure mine will take 15, so I'm not going to measure him until I get to the 15. Wait, took 15 last time anyway. I think I'm going to cough in a second. I can feel a tickle in my throat, so excuse me, I will cover the mic while I do. 
Oh dear, got a little tickles in my throat. Perhaps I ought to have a drink with myself because sometimes, obviously, because I'm talking so much, my throat gets dry. Perhaps I ought to start bringing a drink up and then that would be a little bit easier. We're round again. We now have 12. We only need three more. Three more shouldn't take us long. So again, just to reiterate, we are doing one double crochet into every single crochet in a spiral fashion, amigurumi style. And we're just going round and round and round, which is approximately 15 times until it fits over this orange or whatever object you've decided. My stomach definitely can't wait for its porridge. So that's what I'm having this morning. But as I say, I'm trying to be good. If I could get away with it, it would be a cup of coffee and about probably half a packet of biscuits. But no, I've got to behave. Right, we have 13. Just two more rounds then. Again, you don't have to mark it off like I've been doing because it's only about fitting it onto the orange and that is where you're going to be keep checking it. So I said two more rounds, didn't I? We could check it on the orange after this one. But for guys who have fast forwarded, they will have done 15 rounds and hopefully been checking over on their orange. In fact, we will check at the end of this round, I think. Nearly there. Just a couple more. Every time I say nearly there, I miss a stitch. It's very strange. Right, we're going to say it there, we're going to say it there. So I'm just taking my hook out, I'm going to take my, sti Whoa, to speak. Take my stitch marker out as well. And let's grab this orange. It will be tight, it needs to be tight. See, that's 14. I think perhaps it could do with one more round, but you could leave it at that. I think it'd be nice to cover it a little bit. So I think I'm going to stop there just for demonstration purposes. If you want to add on another round or two or less, depending on your tension, that is up to yourselves. Right, I'm just going to wind up a little bit of yarn because I might add on that extra row. So just pull the yarn through. It's a very long bit, I know. And I'm not going to pull it tight. There we go. So that is our body for our little robin. I will pop him over there. Now the head obviously is a lot smaller, so it's gonna take us a lot less time. Now for the head, we're gonna be exactly the same for the first three rounds. So we're gonna do our slip knot. We are going to do two chain, and we're going to do six double crochets into that first chain. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and 
and six we are now going to do pull it tight if you want I just sometimes do it after a couple of rounds but pulled it tight yeah I'm now going to do two double crochets into every single double crochet to give us 12 stitches so that's one two three four five and two in this last one making our six to give us 12 so we're now going to be one more set of two in every single one so we should get up to 24 stitches then so that's one two so remember just two double crochets into every one of those 12s Keep moving my hand because I keep moving my yarn because it's actually sat on the table and it doesn't run very well when it's on a table but I don't really want to put it on the floor especially with it being a dark yarn I have lost count so as I've lost count I need to do a quick count so I have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 and I need 24, so that means I need a couple more increases. So that was a 21, wasn't it? So now I have 22 stitches. 23. And I have 24 now because I'm doing two in every single one. So it's increasing one every time. Now I'm not going to pop a stitch marker in at this point because all I'm going to be doing is increasing by four stitches. Four stitches? 12 stitches. Why have I said four? Because it is four. It is four. I'm looking at the wrong part of the pattern. So you're going to actually increase by four stitches. So we're going to do two stitches in one and then five straight ones. So the first one, two double crochets into that first one. And then one, two, three, four, five are going to have just one double crochet in each. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. So that's one set the next one so it's two in the first one and then one in each of the next five so we've got one two three four and five so that's two now so we need another one so two in the first one and then one in each of the next five one two three Four and five we've got one more increase to do because I said there was four didn't I so two in this one then we've got one two three oh uh, four and five so that's given us four increases so now we should have let me do a quick I don't we should have 28 stitches there I'm going to pop my stitch marker in because from now on it's just a couple of rounds where I'm not going to be counting or anything I'm just going to be keep going round. we're still on double crochets for every single one and we've only got a couple of rounds here we're just needing to get this depth we've already got the first bit so then we're looking at the rounds from there. So here we go. First round. Just looking at my pattern there. I don't think I've actually written down how many rounds I did for the head. So I'm pretty sure I know how many it is. But so we'll do just one at a time. That's it again, aren't I? Stop splitting. It's just enough to sort of give a little sort of uh, difference from the body so you can see a little shape of his head. And also it meant I could use safety eyes. Because that bit is stitched on after the fact. If you're wanting to be strict and count, as I say, remember it's 28 stitches, but I'm just going to go up to the stitch mark. I'm not going to overthink it at all. So 
so that's one you can see it's already starting to curve around a little bit but we need a little bit more than that don't we So this is our second round of just one double crochet into every stitch. See I'm starting to go around. So this is our second one that we're just finishing. Oh, I'll be looking at either three or four. So that's our second one, that's number two. So number three, off we go. So have a look how number three is sitting, almost there. I need to put the body back on the chocolate orange, I think, for us to see this. So as soon as I'm around, that's what I'm going to do. Right, so I'm going to pop that down a second stitch didn't like going in so let's just pop this over I know I've not tied his ends in but it doesn't matter really so I can see my orange so now I need to decide on the depth of his head mm, I think that's probably going to be okay because I know the angle I'm looking at on the camera the light doesn't seem to be picking it up so I'm okay so that is actually three rounds after you've done your increase so i'm just going to finish with a little slip sti little slip stitch that's right i was going to say slip knot for a second fasten it off make sure you've got enough thread for us to sew it onto his head because it's always handy to have it there rather than having to add yarn and we will take the stitch marker out so we have a head we have a body so we can see that we now need a wing i've already made one wing so you haven't got to watch me make two of them and again these are even quicker than the head these will take us a minute or two i think but again we start with our two chain one two six double crochets into the center the beauty of amigurumi it stays very very similar five and six again as before we're going to be doing two in each until we get our 12 so with one two three that felt a bit tight i think i split it Five and one more to make our six so now we have 12 stitches we're now going to do two in each again so we're going to end up with our 24 so it's almost identical to how we started the head but this is the last round like this i've got a couple of other stitches coming in just to give us a bit of shape so that's three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two more, eleven. 
and our 12. Now the next bit we want to sort of create a bit of a point here. So all we're going to do to do that is we're going to do two half trebles into the next stitch. So yarn round, in, pull through. We have three on the hook. Grab your yarn and pull through all three. That's a half treble. And another half treble in the same space. The next one, you're going to do a treble into the next stitch. So a treble, pull through two and two. So it's slightly longer than the half treble. So in, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. We're now going to do two half trebles in the next one. So we have three, but this time we pull it through all three. So yarn round into the same hole, remember, pull it through all three. We're going to do a double crochet in the next stitch. You're going to do a slip stitch in the next stitch and you have finished. That was it. That was our little wing. It just gives us a little bit of shape for when it goes on to the side. So it's slightly got a little point at this end. So that works out quite nicely. Obviously that's going to be at the bottom. So we have our two little wings now. There is only really, apart from his beak, one more thing to do, which is really important for our Robin. It is our red for his tummy. Now the tummy works the same again, very, very similar to the rest of it, but we need it slightly flatter. So we're going to start with our two chain and at least you can see this a little bit better. And we're going to do our two, our six, should I say, double crochets into that second, that first chain. So it's two, three, four, five and six. And exactly the same as before, two double crochets into each of those six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five and six. Obviously it needs to be a little bit larger than that. I've only done one stitch in that last one. There we go, on six. So we need to do it again, two in each. So we've done, we had six, we have 12, we're gonna have 24 next, because we're going to go two in every single one of those 12. So we've got two, three, Four, so it's just two double crochets into each stitch. Five, six, you're halfway there. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, if I can find the stitch. Ten. Just two more, 11 and our 12th. So we now have 24 stitches. Not quite big enough. You could actually do him a cute little belly. You wouldn't have to do the big one. That is quite large, I think, on that one. You could leave it there if that's what you wanted to do. But I'm going to actually do two double crochet rounds. I'm not going to pop... Now, I will pop the stitch marker in. I was going to say I wouldn't. If I was sat at home on my own doing it, I wouldn't. I'd count 24 stitches twice, and then I know I've done. But because I'm chuntering at everybody, chuntering. I wonder if everybody knows what that means. Just talking um, quite incessantly, actually, quite a lot, <laughs> which is what I do. So chuntering, it's just an expression we use here. don't know whether anybody else uses it out there. It'd be interesting to know. So we're just going round one double crochet into every single one of those stitches. So if you were counting, you would be counting your 24. So you can see our tummy's getting a little bit bigger there. Oh, I lost my stitch. Sometimes you need to stretch your yarn a little bit to see the stitch. It's there. Red is not my favourite colour to work with. I do find it um, sort of affects my eyes a little bit. Love the colour. It's like I love black. 
but I struggle to work with it unless you've got really exceptional lighting. Right, so I'm on my second time round now. So again, just one double crochet into every single one. If you can't keep up with me at this point, just pause it and just do those two rounds and then come back to it. If you're obviously sort of above what I'm doing, then you can just skip it a little bit, can't you? Because it was just two double crochet rounds. Nearly there. And we are there. Yay! I always do a slip stitch as my final stitch because it just flattens it off, I think. So it makes it a little bit neater. I want to leave enough yarn so as I can sew his tummy on. So I've left quite a lot there. I'd rather have too much than too little because otherwise you're going to have to start threading up a separate piece of yarn which is a bit of a pain so we now have two wings one tummy one head and one main body there is just the issue of the beak so I've got a nice yellow here I've seen some people have done their beaks in black I mean really if we're being realistic they should be brown um, but I didn't think it showed very well so you can choose what color you want a light brown might work quite nicely actually so as before slip knot onto the hook but now it's going to be a little bit different and this is where it's not hard it is fiddly so you know it's really hard to get it hard I'm using the word hard again I shouldn't it's just fiddly to get into so I'm going to do the two chain but into this first one this time I'm only doing three three double crochets one two and three Pull it tight now it's hard to get this bit round because I'm wanting to get into that first one and into that first one if I can get in it it is difficult it's just sort of uh, wiggling it about a little bit because it seems like a big gap to go from one side to the other and into that beak I'm going to do two so that's in the first stitch it's hard to hold as well I'm going to go into the second one and do two into the third one which you can see it's curling now it's really sort of and you see i've got to sort of dig to get it because you do need to make sure you're getting both pieces otherwise it'll look messy and i'm going to do two so now just to finish off again depending on the length of the beak i will finish it off there so i need to get into the next stitch though because i want to do a slip stitch we have six stitches now but I want a slip stitch because I really want this beak to be nice and neat. So I'm going to cut my yarn. I think my other beak was slightly longer. But uh, I think the shorter does look a little bit cuter. And we need to push, carefully push it out. Using your hook or whatever you've got at hand. Make sure you keep that hole nice and tight. And you can see we have a little beak that will be stitched on or fall off fair enough so that is it that is all the crochet that's involved here so here he is that's my first one pop him down there now i've used safety eyes for this you don't have to i don't really like these safety eyes can you see like the metal pieces i prefer the ones with the plastic backs i mean certainly these don't move so they are safe but they're still metal inside so i'm not 100 percent sure on that so we're going to position these eyes i don't want them too wide apart best thing to do is position them first it looks a bit freaky at this point and then imagine the beak sort of in the middle so it gives you an approximate i don't know let's bring them a little bit closer actually i will do there we go these are the same as the plastic ones so it's sort of can't describe it that's the top bit there is the bit that pushes up so that's going to be the top to push down if that makes any sense but I do prefer the plastic ones because it's easier to see and easy to put on so here we go we have see they don't click the plastic ones are great because you wear click click and you know 
it's on. I mean, that's certainly not going to come off. I mean, they're rock solid, but I just, I say it's just personal preference. So I've got to get it the right way up. Push it down carefully. Nearly there. I'd say that's about right because you don't really want a gap, too big a gap, but you also don't want it too close either. So I think that would be okay for that. So it, it looks a bit like something for Halloween, let alone um, for our Christmas at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to stitch the head onto here. I'm going to be stuffing it, so I'm just going to push that bit of yarn in there. It helps with the stuffing. And um, my preferred needle. Look at this. It's very messy on here at the moment, isn't it? Let me move things out of the way so we can actually see what we're doing. Don't need the hook in that anymore. So, threading it up. Deciding, roughly... <laughs> it does look funny like that deciding where he's going to go i'm going to start stitching from the back so all i'm going to do just to make sure it's staying in place is there now i can see roughly the line i want to stitch along all the way around now i'm just going to squash his head so you can see what i'm doing so i'm going to pick up just the outer part of the stitch then part of his body, outer part of the stitch, then following the line round. His head's moved slightly because I've squashed it, but this is the line here I am following. Again, you will have your own way of stitching on. This is just my preferred way. I like to try and make it look like it blends in. There you can see, <laughs> it does look funny. When we get about halfway around, we can think about popping a bit of stuffing in, which makes it slightly easy to hold. I'm doing it on the orange because I think that makes it easier as well. So I'm trying to stay with the same line all the way around and I'm only picking that top part of the stitch. So it blends in with the other part of the crochet. It's starting to hold itself now, so it's not so bad. I think a couple more stitches and we'll pop a bit of stuffing in there because he's looking a bit flat, isn't he? Bless him at the minute, a bit deflated. Right, I think we're ready for stuffing. So you can see I've left a gap of about this big, maybe what, an inch, a little bit more. Just a tiny bit of the stuffing, I've got too much here. Right, let's stuff it in. And decide I think maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit more obviously that's going to be to your preference I am using a toy grade stuffing again important to think about where it's going to be going but I think it's cheap enough to buy so I'm picking up top stitch and in top stitch and in I'm nearly round. You see, I've only just got enough yarn. That's why it's nice to leave some nice long ends for your sewing up, because it does make it easier if you use your ends. And last one, just try and flatten that bit off. And that will do. Hey, nice. Nice and tight slip knot there. And then I'm just going to push it through and push it through again so it's gone through the stuff inside so it solidifies it a little bit so there we go as i said it looks more like something for halloween rather than christmas at the moment so we're going to take his little nose now you've got the end that comes from our slip knot and you've got the end you finished off with the end that's come from the slip knot i'm going to push through all the way to position the nose it's not going to do anything else but let me take it out it just holds his little beak in place while you try and stitch it on 
As I said before, the beak is the worst bit. Now trying to pick up stitches and making it look neat is not always easy. So I'm going to turn him because I want my first stitch at the bottom because I don't want it so obvious. So there we go. And again, I'm picking up the top bit. Still keeping it on the orange because it does make it slightly more stable. Picking up the top bit. And stitching in, that's a bit big. There we go. Just top bit. And in. Would help, wouldn't it, if my needle was actually threaded? Right, try that again. Top part of the stitch and into his little face. If you really don't want to do a beak like this, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can always make a little felt beak, a little V-shaped beak, something like that. There we go, I think that will do. We just need to tie ourselves a little knot. Make sure it's not going anywhere. Pull it nice and tight. And thread it through his body, his head should I say like before i'm going to do it a couple of times because that's the finishing off one so now we can trim off those two because this one was only holding it in place anyway so it doesn't matter and this is the one that i've just stitched him on so if you just give it a little squeeze it goes back inside so you can see we now have a little bird so you could just leave it as a little bird it's something you could do in lots of different colors perhaps but now we need his tummy i'm not going to go through that with you because it's exactly the same as we did for our head we don't need to worry about that one, so I'm going to keep that short. I position it with a pin. That would be a good idea to have out. I've got a little tin here, and I'll just show you how I will position it. As I say, I'm probably not going to go through all the stitching of it for you, because you, you can stitch on the way you prefer. So, pin it in place using this lovely loose end here. To stitch all the way round. Now his wings work on the same basis. This is the one that I'd done earlier, and all I've actually done with that one is I've sewn these end that end in to get rid of it, and then I've used this one and stitched it up along the side until I hit a point where I think I'm going to stitch it on to his body. Again, hold it in place if you want to use a pin, it might be a good idea. I didn't earlier, but looking at it now it might be quite a good way of doing it so pop it where you want wanting it i've just stitched mine at the top because i wanted it to sort of flap out but you could stitch all the way around if you were wanting to so there we go another one pinned into place and i would just stitch these top stitches here so that is where his little wing would go all in all, I'll take that one off because I can finish him in a while because I wanted to add an extra round, didn't I? And let's squeeze my original back on to our orange. So I've nicely stitched his tummy on so it sort of sticks out nice and chubby there. He's got his little wings. As I say, I've only stitched the very top bit because I wanted them to stick out. So I think he looks quite cute there. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope... I hope it wasn't too long. It's a little bit difficult when you've got more details on a piece of work. I um, hope you will follow me for my other Christmas items. If you please just like, subscribe and share. Um, pop on that notification bell if you want in the notifications as well. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you're going to watch some of my others and see what my other Christmas uh, projects are going to be. And I will hope to see you soon.